You need a financial advisor with the freedom to focus on your specific needs. Whatever your goals, Reed Potter can create a game plan tailored to you. Call Reed at 432-0777 at Pikeville, Kentucky to learn more. June shines spotlight on the vital importance of pollinators for our ecosystem. Most people don't realize how important pollinators are uh, to the public. Uh, about three-fourths of all food consumed relies on pollination. According to the National Wildlife Federation, pollinators are responsible for one of every three bites we take. We don't really think about how important they are when we're taking that bite of that food that without those bees, that may not be available. On National Pollinators Month, let us recognize the vital role that pollinators play in our world and work collectively to safeguard their well-being. Understand, it's not just honeybees that are pollinators. Bumblebees are pollinators. There's other pollinators besides the honeybee. But the honeybee is one of our biggest pollinators that there are. So we need to try to protect them. Over the past several years, we have a lot of new beekeepers that are keeping just one or two hives in their backyard and area. Of course, you would need to check with your zoning commission, uh, your city, and make sure that bees are available or allowed in your area, and then get some that's available locally and uh, help just little little bits help a whole lot. Uh, just a hive here, a hive there uh, can make a big difference. One of the key messages of Pollinators Month is that everyone can help protect pollinators in their own way. If you can go a little bit longer without mowing your grass in the summertime, let that clover bloom out. Let those bees get a little bit. If you can uh, not mow certain parts of your outer yard, let a few weeds come up. Uh, beekeepers in this area, we depend on things like the goldenrod. Kentucky has, I think, seven different varieties of goldenrods that bloom at different times in the fall. The goldenrod is a large thing that we can allow to sort of overtake some of our property. By making conscious decisions about the plants we cultivate in our gardens, parks, and public spaces, we can collectively create a network of interconnected habitats that support their health and well-being. You know, they're just like humans. Um, pollen is a source of protein, and the nectar is a source of carbohydrates. And their diet needs to be diversified with a certain amount of pollen, the protein, and a certain amount of the carbohydrates, the honey. And they're just like us. We can't live on just one thing or the other. We have to diversify, and they do too. So that's where we see so many different pollens coming in because each pollen has different minerals and uh, work different for the bees. So they will pack in different pollens, different times of the year, different varieties, and make a well balance for the hive. Reporting from Mountaintop News, I'm Ethan Miller.